Well, we have our, our form tool, which uh, we put the radius on last video. And basically that's going to fit into this little apparatus that I made for my lathe. This form tool will slide into here and get locked down. So basically this is a tool holder plus a sign bar. Um, and I'll show you how that actually what works. What we're looking for is a specific angle when we're making these cutters um, which is going to give us our radial flank angle. Let me explain what that is. Your radial flank. Let me zoom out a little bit and you'll notice that from your center point outward tangent to your radius is your radial flank right here so we have our radius here's what we ground on our tool the edge of this cutter okay if I can hold that up there the edge of this cutter is going to perform this line. That's our radial flank. So trying to set up our tool to cut this radius, change the angle so that one leading edge cuts our radial flank. Okay, now this sign bar attachment is going to help when you me build do that. something like this. You have to uh, fit it to your lathe. So I had some, some different things that I did. Um, for instance, I had this T-nut here already uh, for my lathe that was sitting in a box. And uh, I just reused this part. Uh, these knobs down here are going to lock into my cross slide. And we'll talk about uh, cross slides here in a minute. Uh, so when that, those go into the slot, it helps hold this thing true and square. Uh, I also had to recess this nut. So I made a T-nut and a, a specific slot for it so that when this is laying on my uh, cross slide, it's not, the nut isn't touching the cross slide and, and uh, causing problems. I had to machine this because I changed uh, the type of cross slide that I'm actually going to use. And there was a ridge on uh, this other one that I had to uh, get some of this material out of the way. I also, I made this nut here without uh, knurling on it. I want to keep that smooth because I'm going to be taking measurements off of that. Um, Measurements are going to be from this perpendicular piece here and out. Uh, so from here to here, we're going to make some measurements. Now, why would I go through the trouble of making something like this and not just use a regular cross slide? Okay, here's my Craftsman uh, commercial 12-inch lathe that I use. Uh, Someday I'm going to upgrade, but this does a pretty good job. Um, here we have a cross slide that, as you can see, we get uh, your X travel and your Y travel. And then, of course, this has a little extra feature here. You see, we um, I take that off so I can show you my tool holder. You can see we have uh, markings on here for different degree angles. Now, why couldn't I take my form tool that we cut the radius on, and let's say I mounted that on there, and then just, 
let's see I know we need 15 degree angle so why couldn't I just turn this 15 degrees oops that it would have to be this way and cut my um, radial flank or get my radial flank like that well I could I could if I have 15 degrees but if I had say I had 13 or let's say I had 1.875 degrees or 1.324 degrees. Um, there's all different kinds. Cutter radial flank angle in degrees. Well, we have 20. That's a pretty common number. That'd be easy to find. But if you had to find 2.143, for instance, 1.667. Okay, so you get the idea that there are a lot of different radial flank angles. Um, there are a multitude of different cutters that are available. Now if we go over here, here's another here's the watchmaker's lathe. It's my Derbyshire. Now same thing, I could set out on here. I've got uh, I could find angles with that. That's only going to get me so close also. Okay. Over here to the Shoblin, same thing. I can get my degrees right off of that. Okay. But I'm going to have a hard time finding 0.135 a millimeter. So that's what's what this little tool here is going to help me find. You really don't have to be uh, extremely good at math. I'm not. It's been so long some, with some of this that I, I'm uh, getting old, you know. But um, this is this is probably why I'm preferring this book is because he has a lot of this math figured out. He's given us certain dimensions that that's why I'm doing some experiments is to make sure that these dimensions are working out and I'm not making cutters for nothing. All right. The way I'm going to get that angle is I use uh, gauge blocks. Now we could also use micrometer like this. That can give you your measurement here, your inside measurements. We could use that in here. Oops, as we set that up, we would get our measurement. But it's, uh, it's a lot easier and I think more accurate to use the gauge blocks. So I've pre-picked out the gauge blocks that we would need for making this particular cutter. Now I don't know if I mentioned it in the other video or not. We have a eight tooth cutter that we previously made and we cut this pinion with it. Okay if I can get it and we cut this pinion with it now what I want to do as an experiment is make a I'll make a 12 or 14 tooth cutter and we'll see if it cuts uh, see if it functions better and then if it does we we'll need to make find uh, the sign of our angle so we need an angle of 15 degrees I'm gonna just show you on my calculator how that happens and what that number is but if you're interested in uh, 
learning more about sign, some basic shop trigonometry, then uh, we'll provide a link in the description that you can go to and do a little bit more investigating on it. If I do 15 degrees, sign, that gives me this number, 0 0.2588, 0 0.2588. Now, I also have three inches from center to center, center to center. So I want to use millimeter. This thing you just go three inches, press millimeter, 76.2 millimeter. Okay. Take 76.2 millimeter times point. 2588 equals 19.72 that's all we really need 19.72 millimeter is our distance that we need to go here using the gauge blocks which I've already picked out um, we stack these up like this. Take a measurement if you want to check it. Oops, I got that one. Hang on. I got it wrong. Uh, there. All the same thickness together. There we go. 19.72. Alright. The gauge blocks I like because then I can stick them in here push that right up there like that and lock this down okay that will give me 15 degrees let's prove it okay we're gonna use this old protractor here so just sticking this on here and getting a quick measurement, we are almost to 15. What does that say exactly? Just this is showing just under 15. So we know we're pretty close. I think I'm going to trust this. That gives us 15 degrees for our the next flame. section. We will go into setting this up on the lathe, set my stops up, and show you how I do that. And then, uh, depending on how long that is, we might uh, either cut the blank or uh, we'll cut the blank in another video. But we'll keep these videos going until we get an actual cutter made and actually cut a pinion.